Hey there, uh, I'm happy to report that we've uh, released a new version of the community maintained edition of Manim, version V0180. And in this video, I want to take you on a quick tour of the latest improvements in this version um, in form of, of some examples that I've put together in a Jupyter notebook. You too can run this notebook locally right in your browser. I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video below. And with that, we can hop right in. The first big change that you should be aware of uh, in this version is uh, concerning Manim's color handling. So far, we've been using the color module uh, right from PyPI, um, which on the surface has been working quite well. But for some long-term changes that we would like to, to work on, uh, this won't do anymore. And we need some, some well, more specific things or we need to, to have things in a slightly different way. Um, so the, the old version was not, no longer suitable for us. In the new version, we've replaced the, the color class, which you might have interacted with before directly as well. We've replaced this completely with a new and self-written uh, Manim color class. I just want to point out, be very careful in case you have interacted with this um, uh, interface of this, of this color module directly in some way, then this change is a breaking change for you. If you have been using colors like say normally in, in Manim and you have not used this, this color class directly in some way, then the, the, the replacement, the rewritten version should actually be a drop-in replacement. There should be no further changes required on your end to uh, have your code still run. All of the, the old color con constants and everything, those are still there. Uh, they, they just work in a slightly different way now. But in principle, the, the interface is still very much the same. Okay, and with that, let's let's head into the let's head into the notebook. What you can see here is, well, the notebook. First thing is we import Manim, and we see okay, this is now version v zero eighteen zero. We set a bunch of options which are relevant for this notebook, but otherwise not so much. We head right into this first block that I already talked about, namely the uh, coloring system. So the new class, uh, as you can see here, is called Manim Color instead of just Color before. We have a bit of documentation here. It uh, explains more or less well, I hope, uh, what what it is and how the internal representation works. Basically, all of the colors that you that you are using are now encoded as a tuple of of uh, four floats, uh, each encoding the uh, one of the channels basically. Uh, so red, um, green, blue, and the opacity alpha channel. Uh, the interface provides more or less the same options that the old class. The color class provided as well, so you can convert them to all sorts of different formats and outputs and whatever you can, whatever you want to do. Really, I'll show you some some code because that's that's more interesting. Uh, I'm creating our banner uh, and I, I set the color of our banner uh, in in various ways by passing a manim color directly. And how do I how do I choose the color? Well, there are multiple different ways how you can create a color now. One way is you can just pass the hex code of the color. Uh, second way is you pass the, the uh, values uh, in, in RGB, in capital RGB format, where each um, uh, of these components are integers ranging from 0 to 255. Uh, you can pass them as a tuple of, of loads. And the fourth way I present here is uh, using some sort of internal representation with a, uh, an integer, turning this integer into, into its corresponding uh, hex version or the, the hex digit expansion, you'll exactly get the, the, the digits that you would pass to the, uh, when you instantiate the color via the, its hex code. So it's, it's not, it's not actually that far off how this, how this works exactly. Uh, we can render this and we get, well, four versions of our banner with different uh, colors uh, corresponding to these that I, that I've just selected here. Fine. In particular, if you want to construct your color using integer or float tuples, then uh, be aware or make very sure that you don't mix those. Uh, here are two examples where I, in the one case, I just pass uh, three times the integer one, and in the other case, I pass three times the float number 1.0. And what I get is two completely different colors because one is parsed as, uh, well, all just integers ones, which is a very low value in this range from 0 to 255. And in the other case, it's parsed as, as floats. Uh, where uh, I, I set uh, each channel to its, its maximum value, uh, which is the float one. Be, ve be very careful when you use this as an input because you can easily mix up stuff if you're, if you're not careful. 
Uh, one more example, uh, you can also just actually you can even pass, uh, you don't need to go through this, this minimum color class, although that's, that's most of the time it's a little bit cleaner. You can also just pass these arguments to the color class directly. So here is an example where I actually specify a fifth way that I did not show before, uh, where I pass the, the name of the, of the color um, uh, as long as it exists as some sort of capital um, constant in, in, uh, internally in Manim somewhere then uh, it will find it here. And actually, even the, the capitalization of the color itself doesn't even matter. So you can just run this and you will get three times the same color maroon, um, even though you spelled it like differently here and here. Manim doesn't care about that. Okay, one very cool thing with these new colors is that we've included way more uh, predefined colors now, uh, meaning that uh, here we have, uh, for example, these were the colors. I'll just switch to the page. These were the colors that have been included in Manim uh, since like forever. Uh, at this point, we've actually also included on the documentation page now this this fancy little table here. In this case, it's not that in, that, that useful because we have this this fancy graphic here. However, we have uh, four more collections of colors now uh, included right in the library. Uh, you can find examples how to use them uh, in the documentation, and I'll quickly show one of them. For example, the um, colors that uh, came from the the XKCD color um, name survey. That's a list of nearly one thousand uh, color names that are now also included uh, right in Manim. And you can see this page goes on for quite a while. So all of these colors are now easily accessible uh, right from the library. You don't need, to, don't need to import anything else. You can just basically go, you want to import the XKCD color module and then just go whatever color you like in there. Um, just to drive that point home, so to say, I have prepared one short example uh, where all of, these, all of these fancy new colors um, appear in, 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 in one video. I'll just very quickly talk over this. Uh, so this is a this is a, in this scene. I set the background color to to pure black because it's a bit, little bit easier to spot the colors there. Uh, on these three lines, uh, I do some magic to get the uh, all of the different colors included in this color module. Uh, and then for each color, I create a square. I set the fill of this square to my chosen color. I set the uh, stroke to to the opacity of the stroke to zero, so it's invisible basically. And um, I add this new, this colored square that I just created, I add this to a list of squares. I define some sort of uh, sort function, which is in this case, it sorts the, the colors by, by hue. And uh, if the hues should be the same, then it, it sorts by value. Then this here actually sorts the colors in some way, or actually it sorts the indices of the colors, but it doesn't matter so much. You can think about it if you want. And then what I want to do here is, so basically I, I want to sort these colors somehow and, and make an animation so that each square moves to its, its corresponding position. Then here I, I simply fade all of these uh, uh, squares in, uh, slightly lagged so that you can see a nice progression somehow, see that in a moment. Um, and then we just move all of these squares to their proper target, which means that this color object will be sorted in, in some way. Uh, we play this animation and then we wait and in the end we fade out all of the colors so that we end up with a black screen again. If we render this, let's do that. There we go, it finished. I'll show you the result. And this is what it looks like. The squares, the colored squares are faded in and then they travel to their corresponding sorted position. And in the end, everything is faded out. Pretty fancy. The second highlight in our release, so to say, um, that I want to briefly talk about is we have now included a separate module uh, containing type hints, malim.typing. Um, if you don't know what a type hint is, it's not that important. Basically, it's what uh, makes auto-completions in your, in your IDE uh, look more or less correct. And uh, what we've done now is we've, we've uh, moved, we've had some type hints already, but now we've done that in a much more systematic way we've added type hints to the central parts of the library. So in, in particular, the vectorized object class and the object class. So, so these are now uh, type hinted very thoroughly. Let's say it like that. So if we click here, we can see the start of our reworked um, typing guide, which now explicitly men mentions that we have a dedicated typing module uh, where basically we've, we've uh, pinned down how certain types of, of, of parameters, like say, uh, manim coordinates or so, how these exactly should be type hinted. And that 
makes it much more consi consistent throughout the library, which improves the user experience in the end. So this is one thing that you might not notice as much, uh, but it, it should improve uh, life a little bit. And in that context, uh, just to, to give you an idea of where you can actually find type hints if you, if you look at the documentation, these are these things here that are mentioned uh, right next to the parameter if you look at the signature functions, for example. So here we see the, the fill color is uh, something that's, that's called a parsable manim color, which is basically everything that can be turned into a manim color. Uh, we have floats for the opacity and, and so on and so forth. So that's the general idea behind that. The next highlight is something that I'm pretty excited about, to be honest. Uh, it it uh, should, in the long term, help us uh, help people with installation problems much, much better, or much, much faster. Uh, and it's it's a command line tool that's called Manim Check Health. Uh, you can see that that if you run this in the notebook here, it will just print the help text. I'll show you how, what it looks like and how it works uh, in the terminal in a second. But basically, uh, if you run this, it will check whether Manim is con installed correctly, but it can find uh, its, its dependencies like FFmpeg uh, and, and uh, optionally also uh, LaTeX. And if everything is installed, it will render a quick test scene just that you can see everything is working well. And let's quickly take a look at that. I've just brought up the terminal. I can now use this command line tool, Manim check health, ready, um, to see whether all of the things that I mentioned before are correct. So it's on the path, it belongs to the correct library. Uh, FFmpeg is here and it works, uh, LaTeX is here, and also DVI's VGM is here. So everything that we need to render a scene is here, and we can just try and do that um, by allowing money to render a test scene. It's a simple scene, shouldn't take long, and in a second we should see some video here. There we go. Check health demo. All systems are operational, so we have the banner, we have the text, we have some formula. Everything works as it should. Great. The second to last thing uh, that I want to highlight from this release, uh, we've added three more rate functions. In case you don't know what a rate function is, these are uh, the functions that basically control the um, animation uh, velocity in some sense, or animation speed. Uh, there's a good example if you visit this uh, website here, easings.net, because this is something that is used uh, on, on almost all, all animations uh, for web pages, for example, uh, they can see on the on the right end how uh, a movement with this particular um, curve looks like. And in our case, these are the available ones that we've uh, put into Man. You can also use your own one, but these are the ones that are available already. And now with this release, these three, so smooth step, smoother step, and smoother step, uh, these three have made its way into this collection as well. Just to show you how these how these three look, I have prepared a little demo. Uh, it's nothing fancy. I just uh, pass some colors and the names of these. I just we have some sort of comparison and can see, distinguish them somehow. I create uh, three squares, actually four squares for each of these properties here. And I animate, um, that's down here somewhere. I animate for each of these um, uh, squares, I animate them uh, moving down with the given um, rate function. So if we do that, so this is what the scene looks like if you render it. Um, the four squares, the text above indicates which rate function is used and there's a little slider that also indicates the progression of the uh, animation um, so that you can have some sort of reference. If we compare the standard one in Manim, which is called Smooth, with the other three, then you will see, well, slightly different behavior for each of these. Also nice. One last pretty cool feature that I want to point out um, if you head to our documentation, then on the one hand, on this particular page in the change log, you can actually see all of the changes that we've included in this release, which includes, apart from the highlights that I've already mentioned, a few further uh, enhancements, fixed bugs. There's actually also a labeled line and labeled arrow class that's new. Uh, you can go and check those out yourself. However, the cool thing that I do want to show as the very last thing in this video is we have made, uh, with the release, the examples in our documentation, so like this page here, you, in our example gallery, you can see the first book here is, is sort of a recreation of the logo. Um, these examples are now interactive in the sense that you can click on this little button, uh, make interactive below each example here, uh, and it will bring up this editor where you can make changes to the, to the example. So for example, say I want to uh, change the shape of the circle, uh, I want to scale that 
by a factor of two. And then you can run the example right in your browser. It will connect you to uh, uh, the, the service that we use to render, well, the notebook that I showed you before as well, a binder. Um, and after a little while, it should become responsive. You don't. You only have to wait uh, for a little bit for the very first time and afterwards um, it renders exactly. Now we have increased the, the size of the, of the circle by a factor of two. So this is pretty fun and, and should also help um, to learn the ins and outs of, of Manim a little bit easier. If you can just head into the documentation and make, make your changes right there. So for trying something out, this is also quite fun, I guess. Actually, last thing, uh, I've mentioned the changelog already. This contains the names of all of the people who have uh, helped to make this release possible. Uh, this time it's 41 contributors with 19 people who've made their first contribution uh, to the project. I'm very grateful for everyone who's helping out and I do want to apologize sometimes for the long review times. It's, it's life's busy. Um, help with developing Manim is, of course, as usual, always welcome. We've recently held our first... Uh, money meet which is well, some sort of community meeting uh, parts of that meeting were uh, devoted to explaining the development workflow and dragging in more people who can help out all right and that's it that concludes my little tour of the la latest release um, thanks for watching let me know in the comments down below what do you think uh, any features that are still missing out anything that we should give more priority to when uh, preparing the next release which is hopefully not as long uh, in the in the future as, the, as, as this one was, was now let me know and we'll see you in the next release tour video bye